All right, so the next thing we need to look at is the difference between central and inscribed angles. And so the central angle, we already know that that measure is going to be exactly equal. An inscribed angle is different because instead of having its vertex at the center, it actually has its vertex on the circumference of the circle. And so looking at the diagram, we have our central angle is angle D, G, F that has its center at center G. And that's gonna have the exact same measure as the arc that we have. So that's gonna be equal to 80 degrees, just like we were doing on the first set of examples. Our inscribed angle, however, is pulled all the way to the edge. So our inscribed angle is this guy. And so look at, so D, E, F. So look at the size of that angle compared to D, G, F. If you actually held your hands on that angle, your central angle, you would have to actually narrow it down to match up with that exterior or with that inscribed angle DEF. And what I would suggest doing is on your own, you've got a link on here, the HTTPS um, double slash ggbm.at. So that's actually a demo that you can go and play around with. And I'll also link to it on Schoology as well. But that'll show you that no matter how you pull those angles around a circle, that that relationship is always going to hold true, that the inscribed angle is actually going to be half of the central angle. So measure of angle DEF is actually going to be 40 degrees. It's going to be one half the central angle. Or the arc that it intersects. So let's look at this in a few different examples. So examples one through five, we're looking at our diagram. So the first thing that I'm noticing is, let's see, angle A, that first one they want us to look at. Angle A, and if I go ahead and trace out the sides, well, that's actually cutting off this diameter. In other words, it's cutting off half a circle. So that means half a circle, well, we know that's 180 degrees. The inscribed angle is always going to be half of that. So what's half of 180? Well, that's 90 degrees. And so now I can actually fill in some extra values. So I see a triangle in here. And if I know my two angles are 90 and 28, what can I subtract from to find that leftover angle? I can subtract from 180. So 180 minus 90 minus the 28 means I know my extra angle in here is 62 degrees. So angle C, 62 degrees. And then three, four, and five are all about the arc measures. Now, all of these angles are inscribed angles. They're vertex for angle A, for angle B, for angle C. They're all on the edge of the circle. So no matter what, my inscribed angle that intersects with an arc, the arc is going to be twice that measure, or the angle is half the measure of the arc, just like the 90 was half of 180. So let's see here, arc AC. Well, what angle actually cuts that off? Well, my two points are A and C. And so the two sides that cut that off, trace it back, and I'm actually getting to the 28 degrees. So the 28 is actually half of arc AC. So arc AC is going to equal 2 times 28 degrees, aka 56 degrees. Okay, arc AB. Let me change my color. So arc AB is this one. So again, I have to find the sides that link it up with the angle. We have points AB on the edges. <coughs> okay. So the sides that cut that off are actually cutting this back to angle C. So again, the angle is half the arc. So in other words, I have to multiply the angle times two to take it back up to the arc. So that's gonna be two times 62 degrees, AKA 124 degrees. <coughs> arc BC, we already labeled as 180. So just to double check things though, what should all of our arc measures going all the way around the circle always add up to? 
Well, everything should add up to 360. So let's double check that. So we should get, we should be able to do 56 plus 124 plus 180. And so let's check that 156 plus 124 plus 180. Everything adds up to 360. So we know we did our calculations correct. <coughs> so again, the angle is half the measure of the arc or the arc measure is twice the angle. Same scenarios, but it's just what perspective you're taking. Okay, number six. So which statement is true? And unfortunately, I don't have any statements in there. So let me pause the video and see what I was supposed to have in that spot. Alrighty, so again, this problem, I've just added in the extra diagram, which you're already gonna have on the printable copy that you have online. So we're being asked which statement is true. And it's asking us which angles are going to be congruent. And so again, if we base this off the same idea that we used before, so going back up to um, problem number three, where if we have congruent arcs, they're always going to be intersected by congruent angles. We can kind of do the vice versa as well. So we have to figure out which of our angles intersect the same arcs. So let's try our first one. So SPR, let's see here, angle SPR, SPR, if I trace that through, we're looking at angle P, which again comes out to cut off arc SR. Let's see, PSQ, PSQ cuts off this angle. They definitely do not cut off the same angle. So that one's out of the out of the running. Okay, next one. RQS. So let's see here. RQS is here. And RPS, RPS tracing through. Wait a second. If I trace both of those out, what angle do they both intersect? Ah, so both of them intersect arc SR. So that means that needs to be our correct solution on there. So again, two different angles intersect the same arc. Number seven, find the measure of each numbered angle. So using the same idea, we need to figure out, well, which angles can we set equal? Well, let's see here. If I have angle one, if I trace that out, he intersects arc DC. What other angle also intersects that? Huh? angle two. So let's just set those two equal and see what we get. So angle one was 4x minus 7. Angle two is 2x plus 11. And if we go through and solve this, this will give us an answer for x. It won't let us figure out angles three and four, but what do you think is going to be true about those? Uh, they're going to both intersect that top arc AB, so we can set those equal as well for the second half of our problem. So actually, let me go ahead and move this over a little bit so I have enough room. So I need to rewrite that then, bummer. Okay, so let's rewrite that. So we have 4x minus 7 and 2x plus 11. Subtract a 2x from both sides, so 2x minus 7 equals 11. And add 7 to both sides, so 2x equals 18, aka x equals 9. So that means to plug that back in was going to give us both measures angle 1 and 2. Let's plug it back into the 2x plus 11. So 2 times 9 plus 11 is going to give me 18 plus 11, otherwise known as 29 degrees. And so that's going to be both angle 1 and angle 2, both equal that same measure because they were equal. So then we can do the same thing with angles 3 and 4. And again, looking at what values we got, we kind of got a hint on there. We had x or angles 1 and 2 had the x's, angles 3 and 4 had the y's. So we set those equal too. So 5y minus 14 equals 3y plus 8. Subtract the 3y from both sides. And add a 14 to both sides. So that's going to give us 14 plus 8 is 22, I believe. Yep. Divide by 2, that gives me 11. So again, plug that into either one of those angles. Doesn't matter which one. Let's do the 3y plus 8. So 3 times 11 plus 8, aka 33 plus 8 otherwise known as 41 degrees is going to be angle three and angle four. Alrighty, last two examples. 
So eight and nine, all about the diagram. So number eight, eight X minus nine is labeling our angle D. He's an inscribed angle. And it's compared to, if I follow my sides out, compared to 58, 158. So again, what do I have to do to the 158 to compare it to the angle? Or what do I have to do to the angle to compare it to the 158? Well, half the angle is going to be equal to what? Uh, so I could do half of 158 equals the 8x minus 9. Or I can multiply the angle times 2. Let's multiply the angles times 2. Sometimes a little easier to go there because just in case, if I had a number that 158 that wasn't divisible by 2, that wouldn't work out as well. Doesn't matter which way we approach it on this one. So multiply out that 2. We have 16x minus 18 equals 158. So add our 18 to both sides gives us 176. And divide both sides by 16 gives us a very nice value of 11. All righty. Last problem, and this is just a property problem. So find arc BC and arc DE. So we have two different arcs that we need to find, and neither one of them is labeled. But if we could find everything else, that might help us out a little bit. So let's see here. We have a 48 degrees. What do we have to do to the 48 to turn it into the arc BD? Yeah, he's just multiply by 2. So 48 times 2 would give us 96 degrees. Alrighty, we can do the same thing with the 48 degree angle. What do I have to do to that to turn it into the angle measure for CDE? Again, the arc is twice the angle, or the angle is half the arc. So half of 48 would give me 24 degrees. And so actually, does this give us enough information? Let's see here. We would have to add everything together to make 100, excuse me, 360 degrees. So actually, we don't have enough info to find these. Unfortunately, not so much. But we could look at the measures that we were given. And so we can determine arc BD is 96 degrees. And we can determine that angle CDE is 24 degrees. But unfortunately, we don't have enough info on this one. Oh, darn. All righty. So those are our inscribed and central angles. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, you're checking out your next activity for your 10C. Again, check out the GeoGebra exploration um, for this one. Because I knew that it might take a little longer for this video, you have a graded practice, which you have 10 tries on. But if you try it a couple times and you're not quite understanding why you're getting anything incorrect or any particular ones incorrect, again, let me know. Ask me about those questions and I can help you out on those. See you next time.